the past, challenges that Dad had were, were high interest rates specifically and starting from pretty much nothing, um, that was a big issue for him. He had um, took on a lot of debt and the high interest rates that he used to have to pay put huge amounts of pressure on him and that definitely slowed his growth down. Um, more recently, you know, we've tried to diversify into vertically into um, into other businesses, dairy businesses, and um, th that weren't successful, and that's put strain on us personally. But I think as a dairy industry, the thing that's that's constantly uh, an issue for us is the feed pr the milk price relative to the feed price. Um, you know, these feeds that we feed here in the parlor cost a hell of a lot of money, and they do drive production, so it's always very tempting to feed lots of them, but uh, you know, that's the biggest challenge that we face, is trying to find the, the right balance between feeding um, expensive feeds that drive production versus feeding uh, pasture-based um, grasses that, that give us production as well, that are cheap and, and drive the profitability of our business. So, more recently in the last year, fertilizer prices are killing us, <laughs> diesel, you know, it's, just, it's the same thing that most farmers are, are facing. It's um, the constant challenge to, to produce more cheaply with, with uh, these high input costs that we have. So all of our milk gets sold to Spring Meadow Dairies. They are a private dairy producer in uh, Mount West. And they, they make it into fresh milk, cream, mass, uh, milk-based juice products, um, yogurt, uh, and more recently cheese. I'm Nick Stubbs and I farm in the Karkloof in the KwaZulu-Natal Midlands in South Africa. I am the general manager of Stubbs Farming Partnership. Um, we are a dairy business um, that is now diversifying into avocado pear farming. You get the Friesian breed and you get the Holstein breed and um, you get a mix of the two. So we are purebred Holsteins, uh, predominantly American genetics. Uh, it's a bigger cow uh, that produces a bit more milk. We're trying to breed an animal that has as high genetic potential as possible, but we're trying to breed a cow that's functional, uh, that can last in these conditions. It's, it's quite a harsh environment for them. They have to walk a lot. Um, the humidity is a factor for them. And uh, we there are breeds that would probably be better here uh, in terms of how they would be suited to the conditions but we like a high input high output system and these cows give us that so we're breeding a about a 550 kg animal that will give us an 8000 litre lactation. The global tractors do anything from um, predominantly loader work so we chose a, a tractor that's got enough power to pull a heavy feed wagon um, that can also load itself. So um, they do a lot of loading of silage, loading of bales, general loader work around the farm, picking rocks, um, burying dead cows, um, loading fertilizer, loading lime, and as well as mowing pastures. So they spend a lot of time um, on, on the pastures, um, burning fire breaks, uh, carting things, various things, bales, silage, uh, soil, um, seed and fertilizer around the place. So it, the reason we chose it was it fitted in with, with our requirements. So it's a, the 84 kilowatt um, motor gives us enough power to, to pull some of the heavier um, feed wagons. Um, but it came at a price that was, you know, affordable to, to be able to um, use it extensively in, in uh, all of our operations. So it's become our sort of go-to tractor um, and it, it fulfills many, many, many tasks. There aren't many tasks that it, that it can't do. Um, for the bigger jobs, we use the, um, the Bouvet tractors, so the 7614 and 7615, and all of our guidance equipment is on those tractors. However, we do have a 70, uh, 6711 that has got guidance on it that we do a bit of precision work, spreading of fertilizer, um, spreading of lime as well as planting of pastures uh, on our Nottingham Road farm. Uh, yeah, so when we when we uh, moved across to Massey, we we uh, adopted um, the Trimble technology, 
and uh, yeah, we've really enjoyed it. It's, um, I think the user platform is a whole lot easier to, to um, get come to sort of grips with. Um, a couple of our tractor drivers are illiterate um, or haven't, haven't got the best um, sort of education and uh, they've managed to learn really easily how to use the technology and because it's so similar to a cell phone, um, I think that's how they, um, how they pick it up so quickly. Um, there's the fuel saving, there's the, um, we can be a whole lot more precise in the, the materials that we're spreading. So if we need to spread two tons of fertilizer, we spread two tons of fertilizer, we don't end up spreading three tons by mistake. Um, and uh, the other thing that we now do is we grid sample all of our soils and all of the fertilizers that we apply, we, we apply on a, um, on a prescription, so specific to what the needs of the soil are. So we're not just treating it all as, a, as one rate, um, it all gets variably applied. Um, and those, the, those Trimble controllers give us that, um, that option. As much as it's about the tractor, it's also about the service that we get. And as soon as we realized that we were going to get the service that we required and the tractors were going to hold their value um, and, and have value as second-hand tractors or trade-in tractors, then you know, it was an easy decision for us to convert the rest of our fleet to, uh, to Massey. Having been staunch supporters of another brand, moving over to Massey, that's been the, the best surprise, is that the, the tractors are reliable, they can do the job and they're affordable um, and that's what's going to keep us buying them. I'm Andrew Nicholson. I manage the Massey Ferguson tractor dealership in Peter Maritzburg um, called FMS and we look after our customers. Yeah, I managed to convince Nick to buy his first tractors five years ago um, and I'm pleased to say there's not a, another tractor on his farm, there's not a red one at the moment, which is great. For one, it's been nice doing business with your mate, um, but I think more importantly, the backup on, on, on the tractors, you know, if we, we know that if the tractor's going to be down for a day, we've got, there's a, re a replacement tractor that's going to take its place and, and keep us going. For us, productivity is our number one, um, sort of, it's the most important thing for us. We don't run um, extra tractors, so we've got, to, we've got to keep things going. We can't afford to have downtime. So, you know, having that support from Andrew, knowing that if we've got a major breakdown, the guys are going to be here within an hour or two um, and they're going to get us back up and running. Um, I think that's, that's a huge thing um, that plays to that sort of productivity orientated mindset that we have. Um, and then secondly, just knowing that, uh, trusting that I'm, that I'm always going to get a good deal. Um, uh, I, I like doing business with people that I know don't have, um, I'm trying to, to Trying to find a better word than screw me. But <laughs> From previous experience, and there's nothing wrong with putting that into agriculture or into any business, if you're going to buy capital equipment, it's all about the total cost of ownership of that, of that equipment, assuming that that equipment can do the job. So let's, let's park that one side now so the equipment can do the job. The next most important thing is that people are going to look at is what is the total cost of ownership. So we striving to get that component of this thing right. It's not about what does it cost to buy it, it's not about what does it cost to do a thousand hour service. It depends what this tractor or implement costs you over eight or ten thousand hours or however long you choose your life cycle to be. And I spend quite a lot of time working with Nick on these life cycles and and with, with looking at the, the cost of ownership over those life cycles, taking into consideration the different things that go on. Um, pretty important part of the business and I think it links, links in well with what, what they're trying to achieve.